So, yeah, this is the, I think it's the third time I've been trying to do this video. So, after my PC crashed for the third time, I decided to go out and do this outside. So, I have really no idea if this video will turn out because I'm just holding the camera with my hand. Yeah, this is a response to Pagiptions video about about asking why in paganism and I think she raised some very interesting questions I think a lot of people leave Christianity and also quite a few leave, must, um, leave Islam and other religions that are very dogmatic because they say they want to have a religion where they are allowed to ask questions and then they turn right around and they just accept whatever some pagan authors say and I don't ask any questions. Now, the first thing I wanted to comment on oh and that is just some building work that are being done in our neighborhood. Anyway, the first thing I wanted to address is that if you're reading a pagan book and that book and, and that book doesn't explain why, for example, um, the various tools are being used, then you should probably get another book. Now, I'm not talking about not having dogma here, because almost all authors have some sort of path, some sort of preconcept use. What I'm talking about is having, explaining why. Why do we use a cup? Why do we use an altar pentacle? And I completely agree that I do think that you will get a deeper personal meaning and, more, and a more spiritual um, payoff. If you look at each part of your practice and you first investigate everything you can about it, to see why do the why, why is it this way? What is the symbology of it? Why is it common to do it this way? And I also think that it is very um, very important to also dig deeper, see historical uh, data on this. And when you've done all that, you have to sit down and ask yourself the question, why? Why is it important to me? And, and the other thing I want to say is that I think it is extremely important to read several books. Often when you come and you watch the bookshelves of New Pagans, they have a lot of books, but usually by the same few authors. I think that if you do it that way, you will always be stuck in dogma. Because you will only get this person's point of view. So, my teacher, one of the first things he said was, never get stuck in dogma. And the good books about paganism that I have read have always said, be careful. Read other people's views. Not all of the books you will agree with, but every view you read, whatever you think it's a good one or not, will expand your knowledge and force you to think why. Why am I thinking and feeling the way I do? Why do I have the opinions that I do about this topic? When that is said, I also think it is a bit of part of human nature to not ask why. I don't think it is a coincidence that we have so many dogmatic religions. And I think you can see it in every part of human nature. For example, take, talk about fashion. Why do people think that a pair of jeans that have a certain brand is somehow better than a pair of jeans with the same build quality that is from another brand? People don't ask why, they just do it. 
Now, I could go on and on, and I guess that my opinion here is a little bit is a little bit, what should I say, arrogant. But I think that for some people, they need their dogma. I think that for many people, going, cha making the change from Christianity or other parts of other dogmatic religions to paganism is not about wanting to escape from dogma. It is about wanting to be more active and for many women it is about having a religion that values them and their spirituality as much as male spirituality. So I think that many people including pagans need that dogma and I don't think it's necessarily something wrong. So yeah, I guess that I think it is very important to ask why. And I think it is important to meditate on it and find out what's best for you and your spirituality. But I also think that it is important to recognize that for many people it is okay to have a dogma. It is okay to do it just because the scripture says so, just because the book says so, just because your path says so. Because part of being a pagan is accepting human nature. And for a lot of people, nature is being dogmatic. We are a dogmatic species. We like to have these rules and regulations by which we can judge a good life. So yeah, I think that it... I guess I would have three advice. One is, if you're reading a pagan book and it does not tell you why, it tells you about all the tools and all the rituals, but it doesn't give in any details about why, then put the book down, it's not a good book. The second advice is, read a lot of different books, because you need a lot of different perspectives. And my third advice would be, because I don't think that you need a teacher to be a good pagan. I had the good fortune that I did have a teacher, but I don't think you need one. It is sit down, meditate and think, why is this important to me? If you do all those three things, then it doesn't matter if you choose to follow dogma, if that is what you think will work for you. Anyway, that is what I wanted to say. Thank you, Pagription, for your excellent video and for giving us all some questions to think about. So have a great day and blessed be.